Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to look at altcoins for April. A couple of days ago we looked at DeFi altcoins for April. Today we're going to look at DeFi, another DeFi altcoin for April. However, it's not on the Ethereum blockchain. It's on the Cosmos blockchain. I like the technical setup, a lot of big news coming out for it. So without further ado, let's dive into the news and the charts. But of course, you need to like the video up, do that. It helps the channel out a hell of a lot push it through the YouTube algorithm. There's a ton going on out there. Hit that like button, subscribe if you're new to the channel, bell notification icon. Now let's dive into the video. The first coin we're looking at today is Carver.io. Tons of big news coming out for it. And I'm also gonna look at uh, the Bitcoin dominance chart because this is gonna help us out with an altcoin season. Now, the other thing we're gonna look at is the shit perp, everyone's favorite on FTX exchange. I'll make reasons, I'll show you why I think it may be the final legs to this current alt, alt season. I don't think it's the end of the bull market, so just making that clear. Um, other thing is news catalysts. There can be opportunities before and after the events, and that's what I'm looking at today with Carva. So let's dive into Carva. I've got some notes and then we want to get into the news and the charts. Uh, it's not built on Ethereum, as I mentioned earlier. It was a Binance IEO in 2019. Release of Carva 5.1, the V5 upgrade on hard protocol released. Probably doesn't mean much to anyone if you've never heard of Carva, but I'm just looking at the big news that they have uh, that's just been released 31st of March. So this allows for institutional borrowing at varied rates, varied interest rates. And why do I think this is important? If we can get institutions onto platforms and investing their cryptocurrency then it's more likely we're going to have a successful project. So the example here is Tesla put their Bitcoin to work. They can do so through Carver and hard protocols. This is how it would work. Any financial institution can earn 45% on their current BTC holdings. That's wild interest. I don't know how they can support it long term, but I assume it's a short term uh, way to bring institutions on board. So the people first to the party will get the bigger gains and then obviously these will drop over time. Similar to what we've seen on crypto.com with our interest returns, first they were high and then they bring those rates down to something more manageable for the business. So essentially it's marketing. So on their current BTC holdings without counterparty risk, as Tesla owns 1.5 billion worth of Bitcoin or an estimated 45,000 BTC, they can earn up to 21,600 BTC with a 12 month lockup period. So the longer you lock, the more uh, interest you can earn. Cover provides a significant passive income stream that institutions can explore by running or turning their Bitcoin into a cash flowing asset. Cover is also a cross chain multi asset DeFi platform, accepts collateral from other blockchains. Decentralized bank, earn the interest, profits, banks, uh, what banks normally do, they take the interest. Now we're able to do that ourselves if we're wanting to take responsibility for our own money. Mainnet is live on Cosmos, proof of stake about 5 to 20% with the Carver token as well. Token model, all loan fees paid in Carver, fees are burnt, and of course with a decreasing supply is a deflationary asset. Receive staking rewards and governance rights similar to Ethereum's MakerDAO. MakerDAO has about 2% of Ethereum locked in it, and Carver could be Cosmos's make a doubt. So this is what they're aiming for. This is the narrative. This is where the business looks to head. That's what they want to do. So if that's possible, Carver could do very, very well. So institutions can now invest with no counterparty risk at 45% APR on their Bitcoin holdings. Let's check this out in some of the news and the tweets and the chart. News article here from Cointelegraph. Carver postpones hard V2 launch as governance vote fails to reach quorum. This is not an issue. This is a decentralized issue. They don't have any problem with the system. It's just that we need more people to be voting on the chain. So the upgrade, which is what they're looking to do here, the upgrade also carries improvements to the BEP3 relayer that acts as the connection to Binance Smart Chain. So that's another cool thing. They've got their Cosmos, they've got their BS, uh, BSC coming and other improvements to APIs and overall reliability. So this is looking pretty good. Just needs a few more votes on the network. Uh, so this is another little point I wanted to make mention here. The cover platform is nonetheless different from most other DeFi environments as it sacrifices decentralization by actively vetting projects who wish to build on its chain. The goal is to make it an app store of curated DeFi apps. That's what the CEO told Cointelegraph. Some people might see that as not a good thing. Obviously, they're trying to remove the decentralization of other projects coming on board. 
However, I kind of like that in the initial stages. Otherwise, you've got a whole ton of crap trying to be built on the platform and that can really bring the, the platform down. So if they're looking at it now, maybe they keep that later on, maybe they don't, but the App Store, the Apple App Store has gone pretty well. So if you're going for that sort of model to make sure you're bringing on good projects, I don't see such a bad issue there. Now they can still bring on crappy projects, they just don't know, but at least there is someone vetting it at the moment. So you take that for what you will, whether it's a good or a bad idea, but I just wanted to make mention to that as well in regards to Carva. Now, if you wanna check the staking rewards, you can just come to stakingrewards.com, type in earn and Carva up here. You can see the URL, Carva, 1000 Carva, one year lockup, delegate Carva, price at the current price. So you can change all of these features as well. You can say, oh, I think it's gonna go up, it's super bullish, but let's just keep it where it is right now. Revenue over time, looking at about $30 per month, $374 per year on 1,000 Carver, which is currently about $5,800. And this is all in US dollars, 6.37 annualized return. Not too bad, not the best that we've seen, but at least that seems like it is stable and it can it can stay at around 6% moving forward. It's nothing like these 30% which have to come down over time, otherwise that just causes huge inflation to the network. Carver on coin market cap, we're looking at a market cap of $358 million, fully diluted 730. Of course, there are Carver to be released as staking rewards, so this isn't all out on the market and it's not locked up or a ton of it locked up by the team. It is being used for the project. Currently at market rank 151. Now this isn't even the best part. Best part is the chart. I'm gonna to get to that. Carver.io price around $6 at the moment. So it has had a reasonable move in the US dollar value, but of course Bitcoin has also moved. This is what I'm liking the look of the most. Check out the yellow line, which is the Bitcoin value. It is winding up here to move against Bitcoin. And of course, if Bitcoin stays where it is at around 58, 59,000 US dollars or anywhere in that range, then I think we're gonna do very, very well on the dollar price as well as our Bitcoin value. So we've had a big peak uh, last year through the DeFi craze when we were going from uh, May into August, there was a pretty big DeFi move and it looks like we're starting to wind up for that again. I haven't seen it being talked about a hell of a lot and that's what we want to get into. NFT is the craze, DeFi was the craze, it's maybe DeFi's turn to shine again. So let's have a look at the charts and their Twitter. Carver Labs is partnering with Frontier. So you guys that love Front also got some partnerships over here on their Twitter. Check it out. There's a lot of announcements coming out. It's a very active project. The CEO does AMAs on YouTube. So it's not a scam project. It's been around a long time. As I said, it was an IEO on Binance back in 2019. Let's check it out on the chart finally. This is all of Carver's price history back from 2019, 20 weeks down. You know that we love to count weeks, days, time periods to understand whether there is potential for this to continue moving. So 20 weeks down, 23 weeks up, 18 weeks down. We're currently at about 11 weeks up with this high and currently at 14 weeks within this move. So if this happens to head down, then we would say it's 11 weeks up and then we start the count again. But for now, we've seen it go up 23 weeks and the move, kind of the average move length that Carver likes to do is around 20 weeks. Call it 20, 23, 18, somewhere around that 20, 21 weeks. I would say we're about halfway through it or just over halfway at the moment. So looking at history, there is a potential for Carver to continue going for say another seven to nine weeks. And that's gonna bring us two months from now and the move has to start sometime soon to reach that period. Now, if it doesn't, then of course we will fail from this point and head further down. But so far the fibs are looking good. As our 100% range, we've bounced off the 50% for a second time. This time here we first bounced off of the 61%, which is good. So the ranges down are getting smaller. If we come up, this is a 50% drop. Let's measure it, moving that and that and this. Let's pick it up, there we go. Measure it from this low, it's very similar. Very similar again, 61% drop, 61% drop on the fibs. So let's rejoin all of these so we can see what we're doing. This is looking pretty decent on a log scale as well. We're starting to get a good channel on the way up and it's going to get more and more narrow. All good signs here at the moment. We have tested the top, broken out just on high volume, but now we're back retesting those levels. We haven't broken down yet, so this is still looking good. The trend still looks intact. You can see from the low, these lows are all intact at the moment. That would be the first sign that this would 
uh, if it wasn't going well, but for now, trend is looking good and we're going through a bit of a sideways consolidation before a potential breakout. And this consolidation is occurring above the old uh, all time high. So that's another good sign as well. Let's have a look at Carver against Bitcoins because this is the one that is really cool. We've got a huge wind up happening at the lows here, just like we saw when Carver had a double top and it fell away before it finally came to life and just destroyed the DeFi alt season. That percentage gain was about 800%. Say we only get half of that, just as a number to be conservative, 400% with somewhere around 10,000 at the moment. So that's a pretty good return on our Bitcoin value if we can push this high. Say we don't even get that high and we do a 50% on that level, sitting somewhere around here at around the 30,000, still a pretty decent return and we haven't hit the all time high so there's no resistance above. And then the only resistance I've got here are the previous uh, support which broke down. So even a one 200% return on our Bitcoin value from this level, these are the sorts of uh, trades and charts that I like the look of because I'm not buying in at these spike tops. This is a much better setup. Even if we trend down from this point, lose about 25 to 30%, come back to these levels, it's not a big issue to me because I see more upside potential than I do downside potential. So I'm improving my asymmetric risk on a trade like this. So I think the DeFi space is going to come back at some point and I'm hoping for it to be April, especially with my day counts and my price counts. An update on the other four projects I have on the list, we've covered them before on the channel. I'm not bringing you anything new because there is already too many projects out there and I like to focus on a few of them. We do have a lot on the channel. The Graph, Badger, Dot and KSM, we covered that in just the last couple of days. Dot is still setting up. KSM well and truly up there, but they can still go further. Dot I like the look of more so. So I'm gonna look at Graph and Badger to get a little more detail on these. Update of the Bitcoin dominance chart. We've just tested the low set back in February. So this is our major double top play that we're watching here. And the price targets we're looking at are around 50, 48 and 42%. Right now we've tested that low, just pushed down past 59.67 and we've hit 59.65. So if we get this confirmed breakout from the descending triangle, then I think we're definitely going to come back and test these levels at around 57 through to 58. That could help us uh, in the rest of this alt season. Shirt perp, shit perp, is the other chart that we're watching here because this is also getting to the end of an alt season. You can see here our Elliott Wave structure and this is very rough. So if you Elliott Wave professionals out there want to correct it, go for gold. But essentially we got one wave up, two back, three up, four back and five. And that meets all of the criteria. Wave three is generally, well wave three has to be larger than wave one. Wave five can be the largest. Wave four should not meet wave at the top of wave one. So these are all being met so far. A couple other rules, but for now, this is looking pretty sweet. I don't know where this will end, but uh, this is getting to the last legs and that shows up on the Bitcoin dominance and on the shit perp. The graph, like I said, we had a bit of a push after that video, but I'm not concerned if this starts to move down into our accumulation area because at the end of the day, I wanna buy it at lower prices before we take off again. The graph is looking good. This is still all working to plan. It has the potential not to come back this far because it's setting up on a good swing from this point. The, the way that it wouldn't come back is if we started to settle out on these lows or at least these resistance levels at around $1.50 to $1.60 and then start to make its way higher as it breaks around $1.90. Then I would say the show has got more potential to go up from this point and I'll be loading up quicker at that point. Whereas now I'm still comfortable to be loading up anywhere in this purple zone and a little bit out of here if we find some support at that $1.50 to $1.60. So that's the graph. Graph BTC, it's also had a little spike up. Nothing too major, it is starting to trend down a bit. This low is going to be the test, which is why I have an alert set just beneath that low. It could continue to come down and retest these levels at around 1800 Satoshis or this low at 2000. So it's a long way up uh, from those lows. So that could be another 30% off on the Bitcoin, but I see big term potential for the graph. And if we can just get our horizontal, you can see we've got a little bit of highs through that area, highs through here, and we did test that. If that breaks down, like I said, this is my next level just here. All right, so that's the graph, still looking good. Accumulation zone, April. Last one is Badger, which actually just took off today by about 10 or 20%. Badger USDT. 
So it has spiked, it broke through the old support, which is a good thing. We're only four hours into the day. We want to see this close above $43, which was the old support level. You could call, you could argue that it was around 42, but I'm going to bring it up to where the closes were, which is around $43. So that's Badger looking pretty good today so far after a big push up this morning. Everyone was wondering whether this is going to go and I think it will go. So let's just wait and see the close, get that confirmation in and then we decide. So Badger BTC also had the push. Again, we want to see a close above 730 Satoshis. That's going to be ready to go very soon. So let's keep an eye on these two projects as well. That's five altcoins for the April list. Of course, there are plenty more. Sorry if I didn't mention your cryptocurrency on those. I do know there are plenty of other great cryptos out there, but we can only mention so much because we only have so much time in the day. I will be looking at more throughout the month, so be sure to hit the subscribe button and the bell notification icon. Like the video if you found some value from it. If you want to purchase any of these, check out the links down below for CoinSpot, SwiftDex, and Binance. Get your freebies when you sign up and verify your account with those. That's it for today's video. Thank you very much for joining. I'll see you at the next one. Till then, have more fun to get more done.